Okay, so when we go to the next block that we're ready to answer, which says show the 3D sketch of the structure and label all the bond angles, you're going to want to have that table handy that has all those linear, bent, tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, all that stuff on there, okay? Because those names that are going to be directly linked to the angle of the bonds. Uh, specifically, you're going to be looking at the electronic geometry column. What we've already used, guys, is the electronic geometry is directly linked to hybridization, right? If it's tetrahedral, it's sp3. If it's trigonal planar, it's sp2. If it's linear, it's sp, right? Okay, that is also directly linked to the bond angle. If the electronic geometry is tetrahedral, then your bond angle is going to be 109.5 degrees. So you could just write that in on the table where it says tetrahedral. And I think I put those that one together. Did I with the model kit last time? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put one together so we'll have it to reference. Um, but of course, this is a tetrahedral molecule. And when I put it together, guys, with the kit, you can see, okay, I mean, the, the bond angle, what we're talking about is the angle between these two bonds, okay? So if this that I'm holding in my hand, say, were carbon tetrachloride, because that's the one, shucks. That's the molecule we used when we were learning how to draw Lewis structures and followed through on the steps on. Uh, you have to watch because this is obviously what a tetrahedral molecule would look like on your piece of paper, right? And when you look at that, that looks like a 90 degree bond angle. But that's not, that's not a good representation hey, of, of uh, tetrahedral. So... There's tetrahedral and it's 109.5. And again, when you're measuring bond angles, you're measuring the angle between two bonds. Okay, and so in a second, you'll see why some of those aren't going to have a bond angle. Maybe. Okay. Um, trigonal planar is the next one. What does uh, a trigonal planar molecule look like? Do you remember? Like, what is that saying? It's got three. Uh-huh, it's got three domains around it. What would, what would the bond angle be on a trigonal planar molecule? Trigonal planar means you've got a central atom, and you've got three domains around the central atom where it's all single or whether it's a Maybe a double bond somewhere. What do you think the bond angle is? 120, right? Why is it 120? It's past 90. Well, it's past 90, but how come it's not 100? Right, because it's, doesn't it have, each of the three bonds have to total up to be 360? Okay, so that's going to be 120 degrees if the molecule has an electronic geometry of trigonal planar. If it's linear, what's the bond angle going to be? 180. Okay, so of those three bond angles, really the only new thing you've got to learn is the 109.5 because that one's a little different. But you can figure out the 120 and you can figure out the 180. Do you need a worksheet? Um, now, as far as that little box, y'all, when it says you have to do a 3D structure, you're not going to have to do that on the test. All I'm going to be asking you on the test is the bond angle, but I do want to show you, where'd it go? There it is. I wanted to show you what a 3D structure might look like, and if you look through your book, you might have seen something drawn like this. This is the same carbon tetrachloride that we would draw, that I drew on there in that T-shape, okay? This little filled-in triangle and these hash marks are still just a single bond, 
but the reason we do hash marks in a film and triangle is to show dimensions to the molecule. Um, this carbon in the center, the one on the top and the one on the right, guys, those are all these three molecules. Okay, so see how they're in the plane of the paper? The one with the hash marks, that's the one coming out of the paper at you. And the one with the triangle, that's this one back here that's going into the paper. Okay, so can you acclimate yourself to that drawing and, and what you're trying to show if you were to draw it like that? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's go back to the beginning of our worksheet to HF and let's fill in the bond angles. HF doesn't have a bond angle. Why not? Because a bond angle is you have to measure the angle between two different bonds. How many bonds are in HF? One. One. So there's no bond angle to write on HF. So on the test, yes. On the test, am I going to get counted off if I put a bond angle where there's not supposed to be one? No, because on the test, I'm going to have an X there that says don't write anything. Okay? So HF doesn't have a bond angle. O2 doesn't have a bond angle because there's only one area of a bond. Carbon monoxide doesn't have a bond angle. What's the ammonium ion going to have? 109.5. <coughs> Sodium sulfide, we leave that one blank. What about the SO3? 120. ClO2. It's going to be 109.5. What is that dependent on? The tetrahedral. Y'all, the bond angle is dependent on what we put for the electronic geometry. Okay? What's the sulfite, SO3, with a negative 2 charge? 109.5. 109.5. CH2O? 120. Are y'all getting this? Beyond, I mean, you're not just writing down what we're answering, right? Okay, CO2, 180, thiocyanate, 180, nitrate, NO3 with a negative one charge, 120, uh, NO2, nitrogen dioxide, who is it? It's 120, right, because it's trigonal planar, okay. Peroxide, 109.5, C2H2, 180. Uh, let's see. Sigma um, is bond is given the symbol. It's a lowercase sigma. It's an O with a tail on it. And y'all know the symbol for pi, so whether you want to write sigma out or you want to draw the symbol, it doesn't matter. The same for pi. And when we're counting up the sigma and pi bonds, you're going to count it up for the whole molecule. Okay? If you have a single bond, single bonds are sigma bonds. Single bonds do not have any pi bonds at all. Um... If you have a double bond, then you guys know you've drawn two lines, right, for a double bond. One of those is a sigma, and one of those is a pi. If you have a triple bond, oh, shucks, that's wrong. One of those is a sigma, and two of those are a pi. Okay, and there's a lot of... Um, explanation that could go underneath that to understanding what sigma and what pi are, but you really don't need all the explanation if, if you can just count up that singles are one sigma, 
Doubles are one of each, and pi is one sigma and two pi. Let's go back to the beginning, and let's count up sigma and pi. Can I move the slide? Y'all good? Okay. HF. There is one sigma bond in HF. HF only has a single bond. It's a sigma bond. I'm not going to write zero pi, because if I don't write anything about pi, it's understood that there's zero there. What about O2? That's a double bond. One sigma, one pi. Okay. Carbon monoxide. It's a triple bond. So it's got one sigma and two pi. Okay, the ammonium ion has four single bonds. So it has four sigma. Four sigma. Uh, we don't have to worry about the sodium sulfide. Sulfur trioxide, SO3. What's your count there? Three sigma and one pi. Stop me if you miss it or if you just need a second to write it down. Um, ClO2 with a negative one charge. Two sigma. Sulfite ion. Three sigma. CH2O. Three sigma one pi. Car mm. What's that? Okay, one, two, three. And then that other one's a pi. Carbon dioxide? Two sigma, two pi. Two sigma, two pi. Thiocyanate, it doesn't matter which structure you look at, they're both the same as far as the sigma and pi. Two sigma two pi. Uh, nitrate. Three sigma, three sigma one pi. Nitrogen dioxide. Three, two, sigma, one, two sigma one pi. Peroxide. Four, three, three sigma. Uh, C2H2. Three sigma two pi. And that's it, right? Any questions or repeats on those?